Hi there, welcome to another edition of Design Spark Ask the Expert. Today we're going to be talking about thermal imaging and who better than Teledyne Fleur to be having that discussion with. I'd like to introduce you to Jason Cargill. Hi Jason, would you like to say hello to Design Spark? Yeah, hello to everybody at Design Spark. Good to be here. Great. Let's get the, the, the basic question out of the way first. So I think a lot of people's understanding of thermal imaging um, will be what they've seen maybe on news items, you know, where they're, they're imaging for heat signatures, maybe within a disaster zone or some of those uh, TV cop shows where they're using thermal imaging to check if people are actually behind walls, et cetera, which factually a little bit incorrect. So if we just set the scene, Jason, what is thermal imaging in its uh, true sense? Thermal imaging is effectively using technology as that, such as manufactured by Teledyne Flare, to actually see what's invisible, which is essentially infrared energy. So invisible to the human eye, but using a thermal imaging camera, it allows us to detect infrared energy and make it visible within a thermal image or a thermogram, as it's commonly known. Okay. So one of the things, obviously, then you're talking about thermal energy. Yeah. Maybe people don't realize it. Practically all objects give off thermal energy, even, you know, ice, for example, has a, a heat signature that you can pick up with thermal imaging camera. So it's, it's not just things that you imagine to be hot. You can actually map out, you know, at various areas, whether they're, they're hot or cold. But I just want to know about the, the working environment that thermal imaging cameras can be used. Can you just explain a little bit more? Are there any areas where you wouldn't use them? Environmental conditions can be very important. And if you're doing any kind of outdoor thermography, the conditions outside can become important. Um, so although it doesn't mean you can't use them in these environments, but it does mean you've got to be conscious of certain conditions. Now, obviously, if um, if, if it's external and it's weather conditions are bad and there's, there's rain and there's, there's other types of precipitation, that can be a problem. Um, but the actual the beauty of thermography is it's usable in, in such a wide variety, a diverse range of applications. Um, and I think the biggest one for us is Teledyne Flare is the industrial applications and um, the condition monitoring and predictive maintenance and that kind of application. Yeah, but that's actually what I wanted to touch on, you know, for, for industrial and condition monitoring and maintenance, etc. They they do add a lot of benefit, but could you just explain a little bit more behind the, the benefits that they add within those environments and how you can maybe monitor your, your infrastructure using these uh, thermal images? Yeah, well, for example, predictive maintenance allows you to see potentially loose connections. You can look at overloaded cables. You can look at imbalances in an electrical system. We could be looking at poorly ventilated motors and, and a huge amount of other applications as well within an industrial environment. The, the beauty of the product is it can also be used, for example, the, the industrial environment, the building, building envelope can also be monitored with the, with the same thermal imaging camera effectively to see if there's any kind of ingress um, of uh, the heat into a cold area or cold into a, a warm area. So the building envelope can also be monitored with the same thermal imaging camera and allows you to see if the building is performing efficiently. Um, you can yeah. look at HVAC systems as well, air conditioning, refrigeration. There's, there's a huge amount of uh, diverse applications for thermal imaging. Yeah. I think one of the things that we, we find about thermal imaging, particularly within industry use and condition monitoring, is that it's um, it's very flexible in actually giving you a direct measurement of maybe something which is inaccessible or maybe behind, you know, a, a petition where you, for safety reasons, you know, traditionally, if you need to monitor that you'd need to down the machine, for example, fix a few sensors and then run the machine. So I just wonder if you could expand on maybe some of the use cases that you would find within industry. I think the important, the important thing with thermal imaging in particular is you need a direct line of sight to your target. And that kind of relates back to the introduction where we talked about the abuse and the crime dramas on TV. You know, they look very good, um, but thermal imaging needs a direct line of sight. So even simple covers like Perspex covers, for example, which are, are found in multitudes of um, electrical switchgear um, in, in the yeah. construction of them, they need to be removed to be able to analyse a particular um, object. So from a uh, practical perspective, there are certain conditions even inside that the user needs to be aware of. You know, you need to be aware of reflected temperatures. So for example, although we emit infrared energy as human beings, if you're working in an industrial environment, you maybe have a boiler 
or some kind of heat distribution system in the same vicinity. You've got to be aware of these kind of yeah. things when you're taking thermal images to ensure that there's no reflections and, and false anomalies from what you're trying to analyze. Yeah. So from those thermal images then, um, obviously you're collecting the thermal imagery of, of the assets, et cetera. What is it that the, the inspectors are doing with, with, with that information? In, in essence, we have within the Teledyne Flare portfolio, we have software, which is re uh, reporting and analysis software. So you can capture the information on the camera, you save it onto an SD card, um, you can then transfer the saved images onto the software where you can actually then analyze them in more detail and then you can create a report. And it's not always the same people that capture the information as those who actually analyze and prepare the reports. And that's the beauty of the products that we have developed and we manufacture is we want them to be easy to use so that more people are and are able to gather the data but then you might have uh, a sort of higher training yeah. um, involved with some other people who do the research and analysis but the software is the key factor i mean a thermal right. image is a very immediate um it's an immediate communication tool you know a picture speaks a thousand words as the old saying goes a thermal image is a visual representation of what's going on in front of the camera and being able to analyze that information and then transfer it into a report then becomes a document that can be used by other people within the organization as well maybe to make decisions in regards to maintenance activities and that kind of thing yeah so you did mention condition monitoring earlier and i think one of the things that condition monitoring allows um, users to do and obviously for plant and machinery is the early identification of future problems. So in terms of return and investment, like you said, you, you have that immediate kind of visibility of there's going to be a potential um, problem later down the line. You know, you know, for example, on a, a motor that's driving your main conveyor system feed out of the, uh, the, the distribution area, if that feed goes down, it's, you know, it's not just hundreds of pounds of cost, it's thousands, tens of thousands, etc. Would you say that this is a reason, you know, why people are actually, you know, making the 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 uh, thermal imaging camera be much more kind of vis visible, if you like, within industry? I think most definitely. I mean, I, I first came across thermal imaging cameras back in two thousand and six, and you know, even back then, I could see, you know, from even from my limited experience in, in industry, uh, the the use for these products and what what I've seen in, in the years that have um, taken place since then is. There's been a, a real acceptance into the, the marketplace uh, of what could be seen as maybe a um, difficult subject to understand. You know, it's, it's thermography, is anography. You know, it sounds like something that you need to study. And within mm -hmm. our, our company, we do have a training center, where, and training is very, very useful. But again, what we're trying to do is make these products more accessible to more people so that more data can be gathered. And I think from, from my perspective, with the um, also with the, the breadth of product available now, you know, from the very simple kind of Flare One product, which plugs into a, an iPhone or an Android phone, or the new Flare One Edge, which is a new product which works with either platform. These are very simple um, the, the detection devices, which the principle is the same. They allow you to see what's invisible. Now, through our range, we have different platforms, different formats of camera, different resolutions of camera. But ultimately, what we've been able to do is really put this technology into the hands of many more people. So many more people can benefit from thermal imaging and the uh, wide breadth of applications it can can address. Right. So, just want to touch on sensitivity of the the reading. So, I'll give you uh, an example. Um, I was previously using a, a thermal imaging gun to uh, to monitor the temperature of different bearings, and the kind of test was touch by hand and see which one is the hottest. And there was no way I could discern which bearing was warmer or colder until I used the imaging uh, camera. And uh, it was quite clear then that there was a big variance. So in terms of sensitivity, what are we looking at with these type of instruments? Well, thermal sensitivity, it's, um, it's a parameter which is measured in what's called millikelvins. And essentially, it's the ability of the cameras to distinguish between two different temperatures. And basically, the smaller that, that band is, the better, the more sensitive the camera is. So, for example, majority of our cameras are in the kind of the 40 to 50 millikelvin range, which when we transpose that to a Celsius scale, it's kind of 0 
4.05 of a degree centigrade. So essentially these cameras can, can denote very small changes in temperature. The advantage within an industrial environment is that most thermal contrasts and temperature differences are quite high because obviously this equipment's running at quite a high temperature already and if you do have a problem it's quite pronounced. So although we can see 0 0.04 degree of the centigrade, most um, temperature differences, also known as delta T, uh, can be quite high. Right. Okay. Got you. So there's one other thing I just want to um, talk about was the um, thermal imaging cameras in, in terms of how they can make life easier. Um, so, for example, can you superimpose the image over live video or, or a photograph of the environment that you're you're measuring? Yeah, the, the beauty of the cameras now that we have, um, there's two lenses involved, and there's a, a visual camera, which is a dependent on the model, but can be a five megapixel visual camera. And then we have a infrared thermal lens, which is made of a, a material called um, germanium, which is transparent to infrared energy, um, which is why when you look at a glass window with an infrared camera, you can't see through it because the wavelengths won't penetrate glass. Right. Penetrate the material, which is that the lens is made. Um, so what we do, we're able to do, when you pull the trigger once on the thermal camera, it will take two images at the same time, one through the visual lens and one through the thermal lens. And what you have then is two, it's essentially separate images, but you can manipulate them how you want within the software or within the camera. So you can either have a full 100% thermal image, or you can have a thermal image, which is also has the benefits of a technology called NSX, which is multispectral dynamic imaging. And what multispectral dynamic imaging does, mm -hmm. it actually includes some of the visible light details on a thermal image. And that's quite a profound, uh, useful feature within, especially with industrial environments, when you may be looking at motors with rating plates, switchboards, or multi case circuit breakers or miniature circuit breaker banks with numerous labels. You can actually read the detail through the thermal image. Uh, that's not available in all, in all uh, thermal right. imaging manufacturer products because some of them you have to reduce the amount of the thermal image and essentially dilute the thermal image to be able to see visible light through. So MSX, which is a patented system within the Teledyne flare portfolio, is a really useful tool which can be on camera or it can be added after the fact within the software. You also have a feature called oh, picture, okay. picture which will actually put a visible light border around the thermal image to put it more in context, or you can have an actual full 100% visual image. So there's a number of different um, potential functions that you can use with the, within the camera or within the software. Yeah. And just before we finish, uh, I do actually have one cause, one more question because you, you you mentioned the lens there. Yeah. Are lenses interchangeable with thermal cameras, or is it a fixed lens? It depends on the model, and some of the models in our range are fixed, what are called fixed focus, or we'll have a single fixed lens, but others have uh, field-replaceable lenses. And this has been you know, quite a new development over the last few years, because if you change the lens on a camera in days gone by, you would have had to send the camera back to source to be recalibrated with the new lens. Uh, what we have right. in the flare portfolio, which I, which I can speak about, is they're called autocal lenses. So if you order or uh, purchase a flare camera with a single lens or two or three lenses, if you purchase it outright to start with, it will all be calibrated together. But if you invest okay. in a camera and one lens to begin with, and then you buy a new lens maybe 18 months later, you can actually use uh, what's called the auto calibration um, procedure to actually calibrate that lens with the camera. So therefore, in the field, then you literally rotate the uh, the lens by thirty degrees, remove the lens, put the new lens in, and click it into place. But like you would do with a, a standard Nikon Canon camera, you work on kind of a bayonet fitting. Um, but again, useful when it comes to field of view, because if you go from maybe an external position looking at a substation, where ideally you're probably going to use a telephoto mm -hmm. lens to bring the the object closer. When you're inside and maybe looking at it in the switch room where you've got confined space, a wider field of view becomes very useful. And having the ability to switch between lenses is useful. And interestingly yeah. enough that we've launched a product uh, which is called FlexView, which is a dual field of view lens, which essentially means you have two fields of view within the one lens and all you do is toggle between either the telephoto or the standard. 
uh, field of view, which again is useful, and even then you don't have to change lenses. So we've we've covered a number of bases within the the portfolio as it stands today. Yeah. So there's, there's lots of functionality to be had. Um, it makes the inaccessible accessible. It can show you the invisible, as what you said earlier. So I yeah. like the terminology in which you're recommending, obviously, these, these thermal cameras. And it, it sounds like, you know, in terms of the expert, the, the camera itself is, is essentially the expert. Is that right? Yeah, well, it, it, it gathers the data you need to actually be able to produce a result. And, you know, it, it's obviously the technology. Without the technology, we couldn't do the job. You know, anybody doing thermal surveys, they fully, you know, the reliance upon the technology. There's an understanding which goes along with it, but there's certain features in the camera which you can set up which actually become extremely useful when using the technology in the field. And I think the beauty of it is, I mentioned earlier on, that the wide diverse number of applications, you know, we generally think of heat, which, you know, thermal energy is what we talk about. And you mentioned that, you know, we're going down to freezing conditions. I mean, some of our cameras will go down to minus 40 degrees centigrade. And the majority of them will go down to minus 20. So therefore, they can be used for refrigeration uh, applications mm -hmm. as well. But also leak detection in regards to water leaks, um, underfloor heating systems. There's a lot of uses now for cameras for ecology, for example, for things like wildlife surveys. Bat surveys is a, is a particular one which relies upon high resolution and excellent radiometric video. And radiometric basically means that there's temperature data embedded in the image or the video, which allows them, these uh, scientists, to be able to study the data as well. So applications are wide and diverse. Jason, it's been really great talking to you today and giving us all the information about thermal imaging. So thanks again from us, and I hope we see you soon again on DesignSpark. So do I. It's been a pleasure being here. Thanks, everybody.